today we're going to be talking about uh, really how to raise a child in in the digital age that we're talking about. There's really four cores to raising a cyber safe child and creating a cyber safe family. And we're going to talk about those, give examples of those, some stories, and then give you some resources as well uh, that you can use and really implement today if you want to, to make sure that your, your family is safer than it was yesterday. You need to ask yourself this question as a parent. Are you ready? That's a big question, right? But you have to be ready as a parent uh, to actually keep your kids safe, to be to lead your child, not chase them around, but lead them through the, the, the safe use of social media to make sure that their future is brighter and make sure they're not victimized by online predators, which we'll talk about here in, the, in a minute. And so really for parents, Having that education, you are the core, the core one the, and the most important core because the kids will take your lead. If you lead them and show them the way to use social media safely, to use gaming safely, to use apps safely, that's what they will do. If you lead them to figure out how to do it on their own, they're going to learn from other people. Either way, they're going to learn from you or they're going to learn from other people. But it's so important as a parent for you to be the one who is leading them. And that comes down to education. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. One of the uh, kind of mantras we have is if you don't know, don't let them go. Right. If you, if they want a new app, they want a new game and you don't know what that, that app is, the game is or where they're going, then just don't let them go until you understand it and you feel comfortable with it. It could be uh, a new, say they're on Instagram and they want to use Snapchat. You don't know about Snapchat. You can, there's several different parent groups, parent group just like this uh, with, with uh, uh, through MM Guardian, the Cyber Safe Teen Nation. We can ask, hey, how, you know, what do you all think about Snapchat? What do you think about TikTok? What do you think about WeMe? What do you think about all these different apps? And, and other parents can, can guide you in, in their experiences with them. So now you know before your child gets on there uh, what to kind of expect, how to, to monitor them, how to make sure that they are safe as they can be. Because here, here's a example of how it's done wrong. Uh, I was a uh, detective. I was on call, got a call about two o'clock in the morning, said we had a missing juvenile, 13 years old. Uh, she'd been missing for about three or four hours and uh, they ended up, uh, did all the normal things, right? They, they called their friends. They called, they talked to all kinds of different people. Have you seen her? No, no, no. And then they, uh, they did what's called pinging your phone, which means uh, it sends a signal to your phone. And your phone says, okay, I'm, I'm near this tower. And they did that, and she was a state away. Obviously, fear set in. Mom's freaking out. We're very worried. How, why is she there? And end up, she uh, was heading, looked like, to Kansas. And I was able to do some digging on her computer, find out she's talking to a guy in Kansas, and found out that that was actually where she was heading, and luckily enough, we found her uh, before she got there. And, it, you know, as, as crazy as it was, it wasn't a, as dangerous as we thought it was because she was pretending to be 18 years old. And he thought this 18 year old girl was coming to, to live with him because she had an abusive mom when she's actually just running away because she was kind of out of control. But the mom had no uh, way of knowing they, she wasn't monitoring what she was doing. She wasn't seeing the text messages, the instant messages about what, how planning this, this thing out. Cause if she would have known how to do these things or she would have had the ability to, like you do with MM guardian to monitor what she's doing, she would have known this was being planned. This child went out of run away uh, and potentially some very, very bad things from happening. And so we, we say this, right? Every app is a window, right? So the internet is a great thing, The inter but the internet you know, Maybe your win the your child's window to the world where they can experience all kinds of great things, but it's also the world's window to your child. And every app, every game, every social media account they have is another is another window in their bedroom. So as a parent, you need to make sure that you can lock all of those windows. Now, is it very easy to do on its on your own? No, it's not. That's why the, the fourth part here we're going to talk about leveraging technology is being able to, to uh, lock those windows and make sure they're locked and have confidence in they're locked using technology like MM Guardian. So here's, here's another one, right? So all, and basically the apps are windows in the room. And number two is there's no turning back. Once your child, once you say yes, uh, it's, there's, there's no going back on it. You can try to, but you really can't. You know, I have five young boys of my own. 
And so I'm in this just I'm in this just like you are. And and they want they want more Minecraft. They want more uh, uh, video games and that type of stuff. And we limit very much what they can do, where they can go. And we, at this point, they're young enough to where no one can contact them. Uh, but still, once we say yes to, OK, you can get an you can get another app. Then it's, you know, two days later, okay, we want another one and another one. So understand that once you say yes, there is no turning back. And a perfect example of this is I was, I was doing a training, like through the CyberSafe team, we do training in schools. We do training for youth involved professional, both in person and online and uh, on demand videos uh, for all three of those uh, schools, parents and youth involved professionals. And I was, I was doing a parent training and as we see so many times now that there's a grand uh, grandfather uh, raising a grandchild. And obviously, if it's hard for us at you know, 30, 40, 50 years old to understand the technology, our parents, 60, 70 plus years old, have a very, very difficult time. And so he was talking to me afterwards and he's like, he's like, uh, Mike, if I, I want my granddaughter off Snapchat. She's 16 years old. She's sending those pictures. She's been in trouble many times on this, but I want her to make sure that she is off Snapchat. And I told him, I was like, you know, that that's great. It, you know, it's a good decision, but the problem is it's too late because she knows how to log in. She has her own account and you can, he's like, well, what if I take her phone from her? I was like, well, how many times have we seen to where they get a friend's phone, right? They get a phone from a friend that says, okay, uh, you can use this one. Now they're on Wi-Fi and they're doing whatever they want to do. So once you allow them to to have access, it's forever. Don't think that, okay, we're going to let them have a little bit of Snapchat, a little bit of TikTok, a little bit of Instagram, and then we can pull back. Because in the end, you really can't do that. You just you just can't do that. Once the genie is out of the bottle, there's no way to return it. So be very conscious of what you're allowing your child to do. And we said, we you need, as a parent, you must lead your child. Because your child is going to learn from somewhere. They're going to learn from somebody. They're going to learn uh, how to interact, how to how to have conversations with people, what's safe, what's not, what's appropriate, what's not. They're going to learn that. Either it's going to be from you or it's going to be uh, from their friends or other people that, that are online. And so a, a perfect example of this is, we, I call it the racetrack dad story. Uh, another parent uh training that we did. A parent came up afterwards. He's like, you know, I believe there may be a problem. My 13 year old son and I build some type of race cars, not like full uh, engine race cars, but like uh, soapbox derby cars. And they go around in different, different uh, places and, and race these cars. And so during this time, uh, one of the ones up uh, about a two states away, they were up there and he noticed his son between races would go and he would talk to a man that he didn't know about 30 year old man. And so he didn't really say anything to the son, but on the way home, he's like, Hey, who's that guy you were talking to? He's like, Oh, that was Sean. He's like, well, how do you know from Sean? Oh, I met him online. I met him on a gaming system. He was on a, on a game. And he said, he's going to come up here and meet me. And, uh, I, uh, told him where we we're going. So he, he came up here to meet me. I didn't know he's that old. I thought he's my age. And so I was very alarmed at this. And I told the dad, give me his phone, give me his computer, give me his gaming system. I'll examine everything I can and, and make sure that your child is safe. Now here's kind of the difference in, in parenting styles is that he said he didn't want, that's great, but he didn't want to break his son's trust. He didn't want to invade his privacy. And I told him, I was like, you understand that your child was one step away from being abducted. Hey, come out to my car. I got this, I got this new, new controller for you to see. And your dad turns around, boom, he's, you know, what can happen? But he didn't want to protect it. He didn't want to invade his privacy. So uh, he said he didn't want to do that. And so that child is going to be raised and find out what's correct and how to act in by people online. Not that, not the father, right? So think about this. Having to do with the race cars, you know, we at 16 years old, 15 years old in some states, uh, you're going to get a license. You can't just walk down to the DMV and say, all right, give me a license. There's certain steps you have to do to, to ensure that you are a safe driver. Right. You have to take most places. You have to take a written test. You get a permit. There's certain things you have to do uh, as to, to show that you are a good driver as a permit. Then you take a written then you take a physical driving test. 
And then eventually you get your own license where you can drive uh, by yourself. All those different steps to make sure you're safe. We don't do that with a phone. We just hand kids a phone and hope that they figure it out. But by leading, by, by getting educated, uh, by learning uh, about apps they're on, by learning about the threats that are out there, you as a parent can lead your child can, and can teach your child how to drive safely on the uh, Internet. And so we come back to this. Are you ready? Your child either maybe has a phone, maybe they are getting ready to get a phone. Are you ready to take on that responsibility to lead your child? If you are, we'll continue on to the next one, All right? So core two is our kids. Now that we, you, know, you are on the right path as a parent to say, you know, you understand that there's threats out there. You understand how to uh, leverage technology and teach your child and lead your child. You know, we want to make sure that they understand that the world is not a, a great place, right? There's no kitty section to the internet. So if they go to Facebook, they go to Instagram, they go to Snapchat, they are on the full uh the, the full gamut of the, of the internet. Now, I know TikTok just uh, announced, I think yesterday or the day before, that all uh, accounts that say they're 16 and under are going to be set to private and they're going to try to limit uh, activity, uh, communication to those, those accounts. But let me tell you, I mean, we're, we train down to, to third grade and those kids are online. Those kids, over half those kids have their, already have their Instagram account or Snapchat account or TikTok account. And they're eight, nine, 10 years old. They're already lying about their age. So the fact they say, well, they're 16, well, there's no way to verify that. So it's, that's a good start. But in the end, if the kid wants around it, they can, they can get around it. So one of the things we, we got to make sure that our kids know is this, pics and posts are forever, right? As, you know, as us as parents, we may have done some silly stuff. There may be some Polaroids or maybe some pictures here and there about stuff we did when we were younger, maybe in college, early 20s or whatever. But that's really physical pictures. That's not online. That's not something that people can just look up and find. But our kids now, like I said, our, we, we, down to third grade, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, they are documenting their life forever. So by the time they reach, you know, 21, 22 years old, they have documented 15, 14, 13 years of their life, everything they've done through social media for everyone to see. And eventually, you know, we want as parents, we want our kids, well, we want our kids out of the house. Let's be honest. Uh, we want them to be full fledged adults doing, uh, doing well as adults and have their first job and start their career and start their life as an adult. But these things they do online can really catch up to them. There's a young lady. She's 24 years old. She called me because she wanted, she had an issue and she wanted to get uh, some videos and pictures taken off the internet. Now what had happened is that she uh, was dating a boy in, in high school and they went to college and they were dating during that time. And during those times they were having sexual encounters and he wanted to videotape them. She agreed, and by the time she's getting ready to graduate college, she's having these pictures uh, sent or posted up on different pornography sites. She's freaking out. Her name's attached to it. Her address is attached to it. Her phone's attached to it. She's getting phone calls. She's getting people coming up to her house in the middle of the night. It's actually her parents' house uh, in the middle of the night, and she's freaking out. Now she's getting ready to graduate college. You start her, you know, her, her job search. And when you put her name into Google, first full page of Google is, is pictures of her, videos of her on pornography sites. Who's going to hire you? If this happens to your child, who's going to hire your child? Right? They, didn't do, they, they weren't doing horrible things. They're not bad people. But this is what people see. First thing we would do... Uh, as a doing background checks for uh, for the police department is we would do a search on online for people, check your social media accounts. And people were kicked out of this, the hiring process specifically because of this kids are losing scholarships over this, right? They're losing friends over what's going on. So that's, that's one piece to it, right? Things that are happening are, are, are following them for the rest of their life. We got to also worry about the predators uh, that are out there are uh, the, according to the, 
uh, FBI, there's around 750,000 pedophiles online anytime that our children are online. And through my experience investigating these guys and helping put over 100 pedophiles in, in prison over the last uh, 13 years as, as law enforcement and uh, afterwards as, as a uh, contractor with them, uh, you know, I, I know for a fact that it's not, it's not just one child uh, that's being uh, exploited. These online pedophiles, these online predators are exploiting child after child after child. And by the time law enforcement finds out about it, there's, there's, there's usually multiple victims. So you figure 750,000 online at any one time our child gets online times multiple victims. That's a lot of children who are being exploited. And it's a constant thing. These, this is a full time job for these predators is to be online, to find kids and to exploit them. So in, we know, you know the predators are are looking for pictures. They're looking to try to sexually exploit our children. But a lot of times our kids are doing it uh, on their own. There's around, we, I'm, I'm part of a group called Save Our uh, Kids Coalition, and we do a survey of our, our local high schools, our local middle schools, our local elementary schools. And we asked them, uh, have you been asked for a picture of yourself nude? And if you have, have you sent a picture of yourself nude? In this survey, and fifty percent of our high school students said they have sent a picture of themselves in the last twelve months if they were asked. Fifty percent—that's a huge number, right? It, all they had to do is, is be asked for pictures, and fifty percent send either to people they know or they didn't know. It didn't matter. It was both of them were fifty percent. And so, what can happen to this? Obviously, the predators we just talked about, but also uh, there's legal charges. In many states, uh, any state, it's, it's illegal to possess child pornography. And pictures of, of anyone under the age of 18, nude, semi-nude, involved in sexual contact, is generally considered child pornography. Now, each state has a different law. Each state has a different interpretation of this. But uh, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you can get in some type of legal trouble as a, a juvenile for sending these pictures. In, in Kentucky, there's a school that I was uh, training at. I missed the sixth grade because of a snow day, and I came back to, 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 tra to train them about a week later, and this happened. Uh, two sixth graders uh, like the same boy, two sixth grade girls like the same boy, and say girl A, girl B. Uh, girl B had a brother who was in ninth grade, and he sent a picture, or he, he talked to the other sixth grade girl to send a picture of herself, he got the picture of herself topless, gave it to the sister. The sister and cousin sent it out uh, on Snapchat the next day. Well, luckily, one of the sixth graders had been in one of my classes and knew exactly what to do. So she went to the vice principal and said, I'm not supposed to have this. I don't want to get in trouble. And I'm turning this over to you. They started the investigation. They found out what had happened. And the, do you think that the sixth grade girl, her cousin, and the ninth grade boy thought about it? Thought that, oh, man, this is illegal. I'm, I could be looking at many, many felonies. Well, they didn't think about that. They didn't think about it until they were in handcuffs being put in the back of the sheriff's car and taken down to our juvenile court system and being charged with these felonies. Now, the girl who took the picture, she got kicked out of school and put into uh, uh, alternative school. The other three were, were expelled from the school system. And now you think, well, hopefully they can take, you know, this, this will be a juvenile record. They're done with the juvenile record. Boom. Uh, they can hit the adulthood and everything's fine. They learned a lesson. Problem is the ninth grade boy, he has lost, uh, he got kicked out of school. So that's on his record. He's going to apply to college. He's going to apply to uh, apply for jobs. They're going to say, hey, why'd you get kicked out of school? He's going to tell them who's going to hire him with, with the fact that he had felony child uh, pornography charges. He's now limited himself just because he did one stupid thing. And so our kids have to know to, to understand these things. Uh, and, you know, and so we know that our parents know these, you know, have to know these things. Our kids have to know these things. Kind of what's the next part? The next part is really having a contract. It sounds very simple, but it's very, very powerful. We've worked with many families implementing these contracts. And without a doubt, we hear the one, number one thing we hear is it stops fights. So once you agree on all these things and the kids agree to all these things, and, and we're going to talk about here in just a second, once you agree to those things, then it sets those expectations and the, it's very difficult for them to argue. Uh, I didn't know I was supposed to do it when it's right there on the contract. Right. So we can, we can kind of uh, jump over. 
get behind my camera. Okay. And so this is really the, uh, the contract. And if you want a copy of this, uh, I'll give you my email here in just a minute. And this is the general contract that you can kind of customize as you see fit. And so it really, it's, it's simple one page, right? So it starts out here with uh, how they're going to conduct themselves. And then here's a big part here is making sure you as a parent have a username and password. And here's why that's important. The girl who went to Kansas, right? We had to try to figure out her social media accounts and then get into her, her computer while we're still trying to, to get with Facebook to get those messages to see who she's talking to. Luckily, we were able to, I was able to get in and get her messages off her computer. Uh, but otherwise, it would have been many, many hours before Facebook, even if they're trying their hardest to get that information. And so if you have that information and something happens, your child's missing, then we, we can actually speed up the process of getting them returned. Uh, so all these, these pieces here are basically how they communicate with people, uh, what they're supposed to do, if, this, if they are or are not supposed to download without your approval, uh, how they act or, or you know, harass, if they're supposed to harass people, obviously not. And then uh, they're supposed to in, provide you the ability to inspect your, the, uh, uh, the phone. And we'll talk about that, why that's important in a minute. And then, but it also sh uh, has a section for you, right? So here it has a section for you that says what you agree upon. For parents, you put your name here, agree to these terms. Basically, you are going to uh, provide the uh, phone to them as long as they, as long as they abide by these, uh, these tools. But here's, here's the big thing is that if you, uh, if something happens and they come to you and say, you know, I'm being approached by this predator or I'm being uh, attacked or maybe I did something stupid that they know that they will not lose. If they come to you, they will not lose their social life, the social media life forever. Because so many times I've investigated cases. I'm like, why didn't you tell your parents this is going on? Well, they'll freak out even though I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I was, I was the victim, but I was afraid if they knew about it, then I would lose the ability to be online forever. So have that kind of grace for them to be able to do that. And in the end here, have the path to move forward. That freedom is, uh, obviously it says you're going to be inspecting it so many times a month or week, whatever you decide. And then if you, if you do these things, uh, if you buy by these things at a certain period of time, then here's the carrot right here. You can get another game or you can get, maybe another 15 minutes a day online, whatever you you decide you can, you can, you abide by uh, that, that so, cause eventually we want them to be 18 years old, have full autonomy, be able to, to safely use social media and be out on their own. And so we got to, as we go, as they get older, we've got to give them some more uh, ability to do that. Even if they screw up, you know, we'd rather have them screw up now than, than later. Uh, and then the fourth, core, which is leveraging technology, which is a big part of, of why I'm here. Now, the technology really scares people a lot of times, uh, especially, you know, I've, I've dealt a lot with uh, grandparents raising kids and they are feel they're very, very ill-equipped to do this. And I ex explained to them, leveraging technology does not mean having to have an IT degree. It's something you may want to make sure that you're only going as far as you feel comfortable. Like I said, if, if you have if you don't understand anything and you just want to get them a, a call and text phone, that that's okay. Eventually they're going to go to a smartphone when you're ready and they're ready. Finger scrolling is, is an effective use of leveraging technology, right? If you can do nothing more than click on apps, make sure the apps are what they say they are because they can change uh, the names of them. They can change the uh, little icons uh, and making sure that that's, that's one level of uh, security. And what we're talking about here is, kind of layers of security. So uh, like say we want to protect our house, right? We have the door locks we can put on. Then maybe the next layer would be the uh, ring, something like that, where it's a, a, a security system. And then the highest layer would be maybe an armed guard, right? So just because you have an armed guard doesn't mean you shouldn't have uh a lock and ring is also a, a, a good thing. We suggest having all these layers. The first layer uh, we suggest is to ha is to do just do random searches, finger scroll, check out their phone. That's very very effective because here's the thing: you only have to be 
lucky once to catch them, right? They've got to be lucky every single time so you don't see what they're doing, if they're doing something wrong. So the, the, the next level is kind of the local uh, security features. So is screen time or uh, family link. Now, these are good to kind of control times that they can use it. This is good to control kind of where they can go. Uh, so that's, that's more like the, the second level. And then the third level is the monitor apps. So a, an app not only can control where they go, so it can take the place of some of the like family link, but it, what it also does is give you the ability to monitor. So you may be scrolling through the fing, you know, finger scrolling, you're going to see what's left on the phone. But a modern app like MM Garden is going to show you uh, things that are on there that you are not going to be able to find just using your finger because maybe it's deleted. You know, maybe it was uh, uh, you're, you don't know how to how to get to these things. Maybe it's just so much so much information that it's overwhelming. And she's got you know, your daughter's got 500 text messages on there and you don't feel like you can go through 500 text messages. But that's when the like MM Guardian has the ability to search that for you with their uh, AI and tell you and send you alerts to say, hey, this is important. You need to you need to check this this text out or this message out or this whatever out. And so having those three layers, the, the physical, like the finger scrolling, you know, accessing or using the, the native apps and then adding a, a modern app with it's very robust and, and having the ability to, to monitor, make sure your child's as safe as they can be like MM guarding is, is vital to having that plan. And those are really the four cores uh, that we're talking about today. Okay. So right, how so do you handle or what best way to explain privacy and respective space? I, I think for, for me, uh, we got, if you go to the end and work backwards, it's easier to understand. If the child from the uh, race box dad case was missing, do you, do you think that that father would have the same understanding of respect and respect and privacy? Should you, should you have your child have uh, respect privacy and you respect it? Absolutely. I think so. But just, just because, uh, I think it goes along like like as they're getting older, they, you maybe give them more privacy. You give them you respect the privacy a little bit more because in the end, you know, you don't want to be hovered over your child at 18 years old and they can't do anything without you. Understand that. But it really goes down to one, the age, how old they are, how mature they are and how uh, uh, kind of their history. If they have a, a history of, of bucking the rules and they got a history of making bad decisions, then, then as a parent, you probably need to watch them a little bit, a little bit more compared to a child who uh, doesn't do that. And so there's, there's no like, you know, check off chart to where it's, 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 uh, this is what exactly you do. It's, it's really an art, obviously, uh, art of parenting. Yeah, and I think the the contract you're talking about probably really helps out with that type of stuff. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that with MM Guardian, you can. Uh, pretty much give your child as much freedom as they have earned. So if you want to, you know, lock their phone down, read their messages, uh, you can do that. If you'd rather just take a more hands-off approach and only be alerted about concerning messages and investigate those, you can do that as well. So you get a lot of flexibility there. And another question. Uh, what if someone sends your child a nude pic? What's the next step? Uh, I think it would, it would come down to uh, who the who the person is sent it is. Well, if it's another child that you know that you know, you're, you may want to contact the the parent first. But if it's someone who you are not sure, I would definitely notify the police because here's here's the deal: these pedophiles don't hit go out there and say, "Hey, I'm a pedophile. Can I talk to you? Uh, you're 12 years old. I like 12 year olds, right?" They pretend to be 12 year olds. They pretend to be other people. So if they're sending these pictures. It, in a lot of the cases I've worked, it's not even them. It's victims that they've had before they're using to send uh, to try to get pictures from your child. So personally, for me, if it happened, like I said, if it's another child that we know is we know this is their girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, I'd probably handle that with contacting the parents first. Uh, but if you don't know who that is, then you definitely I would contact the police. And if uh, MM Guardian has a, a predator alert on that where they can uh you know, I'm telling you when he said it, it's, it, it speeds it up by four months locating these pedophiles. I've seen it. You know, I've, I've worked the cases where it's been four months till the case gets to me and takes two months for me to work. Whereas if we could have done that right off the bat, 
uh, it, it really saves that time. And I, I love that feature about MM Guardian. Yeah, and definitely the more resources that police have when it comes to reporting these predators, the better. Uh, they'll have, they have databases. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has a massive database with uh, all sorts of information about children who have been exploited and predators. So the more information they have, the more effectively they can do their jobs to protect children. I will say this yeah. just one thing though, is do not send that picture. So I've had many times where parents are like, Hey, my child got this picture and they text it to me. Like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> That's still child yeah. pornography. It's like, Hey, my child has this bag of cocaine. I'm going to go bring it to you. Now just, just contact the police, leave it where it's at and think of it as, you know, it's, is anything else that's illegal. Don't, don't pass mm -hmm. it on. Yeah. And that's one thing that we really kept in mind when designing MM Guardian for our inappropriate picture detection. If an inappropriate picture is detected on the child's device, either sent or received via MMS or saved on the phone, instead of that picture being sent to the parent app, which would require it being stored in a database, we simply make a copy of that picture and it is stored on the app on the child's device. So it never leaves the child devi child's device, which protects you as a parent from a legal standpoint and also provides the maximum amount of security from your child because I don't care what database it is, like any database can be vulnerable in some way. So uh, by not leaving the device, that's the safest way to go about that.